Rovers return to League One action and return to losing ways. How much more can we take of the shambolic performances by Rovers? We'll talk about that and much more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match and another defeat review. That's right, I'm sick and tired of these def poor and pathetic performances that cost us huge points when we should be picking up uh, easy wins in t uh, against teams such as Oldham. No disrespect to Oldham anyway. Before I get into the, uh, into the thick of things, stop what you're doing, swallow what you're chewing, and smash that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, if you want to, that is. But anyway, a shambolic 1-0 defeat against Oldham Athletic. Like I said at the you know at the beginning, we've got to give Oldham credit. They're coming into this game, uh, I think, on the back of three or four games unbeaten. I think they're three or four games winning. So uh, they're, they're they're coming into this hot on form uh, with a with a person who's looking for a job, a full time gig, and he continued where he left off um, before the international break. So Richie Wellens, fair play to you, fair play to your guys. But Tony Mowbray, let's have a let's have another look at you now. There you have the statistics there. These are taken from the BBC website. It did seem that, that Rovers were, were were in this match and they, they, they did have chances. I think Elliot Bennett had a stonking chance to open up the scoring uh, midway through the first half. He done. Uh, Rovers did all the hard work. Uh, Bennett had, a, had an opportunity to stick the ball in the back of the net. But he did not. In the second half, there was a chance. I think Samuel had a heading opportunity that could have, should have stuck it in the back of the net. Peter Whittingham had a shot off the bar. So we had two or three decent opportunities to get in the back of the net. But we didn't. Uh, instead, Oldham bided their time. They took it and they ran with it and they got the goal. So, Mowbray, what's the point of sticking Elliot Ward in our defence? It's clear as day that he's our weakest link in that defensive back line. Despite playing alongside Charlie Morgan, who at trade is a, uh, is a central midfielder. But... I don't know what you're smelling or what you're smoking, but Elliot Ward needs to be on the bench at best. Peter Downing has come in on loan and he's done a cracking job whenever he's played. Um, unless, he's, unless there's something that you're not telling us, maybe he has an injury or something like that, fair play. But Elliot Ward uh, should be third or fourth or fifth pick centre back. I'd rather play Scott Wharton or, or Doyle or any one of the youngsters um, in place of him. So Rovers had nine shots uh, on the day, three on target. As for Oldham, 16, seven on target, and obviously one in the back of the net. Another point of contention was the referee dishing out the cards like it was Christmas time. I don't know, I think it must have been five or six Rovers players uh, who received the booking today. I don't have the statistics in front of me, but uh, poor performance by the ref. Yes, there was some nasty tackles. I think Chapman deserved the yellow. Chapman, again, when he came on, looked lively. Um, but yeah, another gaff I felt Tony Mowbray did was he pulled all of his, his cards out of the deck and played them all at once. He brought on Danny Graham, he brought on Chapman, and then he brought on Dak with 20 minutes to go. Uh, this is an away game, okay? And, and I said this in the preview that we have to take, we have to give respect to Oldham. They are unbeaten under Richie Wellens. Um, who's looking to get this job on a permanent basis? So we need to be we need to be a little bit cautious. They turned over Portsmouth. They are a strong side. They have picked up some decent results over the past two or three games. So we we had to give them credit, and I think Mowbray gave them credit at the for the starting eleven, albeit Elliot Ward, um, but to uh, to throw everything at it in the last twenty or thirty minutes. That's ballsy. It's very ballsy, and if it pays off, fair dues. If it doesn't, then. Uh, then we're going to go away with no points, and that's what exactly what happened. We ripped out the defensive core of the of the side, and that uh, and that exposed our weak. And it is a weak uh, de defensive back four. We have yes, fair play to the fullbacks, uh, Cadis and Williams. They do run their socks off, but defensively, we're we're shambolic. And whenever Elliot Ward is on that pitch. I fear the worst. There was two or three times, again, in the first half that he was clumsy uh, and it felt like he was either going to get sent off or, or booked or slip or it just did not seem in control whatsoever with him on the pitch. So the next two games are going to be massive for Rovers with uh, two home games against Plymouth and then Portsmouth. Maximum points should be, uh, should be achieved or we can write off automatic promotion straight off the bat. That, that, that'll be it. I think the next two games, if we do not pick up six points, the best we can hope for is sneaking through the back door of the playoffs and get ourselves out of this division. But if we don't, if we lose the next two games, then I think serious questions need to be made about uh, Tony Mowbray. You know, we have the best squad 
despite our financial restraints in the division. But we are struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. We have players like Bennett. We have a quality midfielder in, in Peter Whittingham who took a step down from the Championship to the League One to play uh, for Blackburn Rovers. Um, I think quest, serious question marks need to be made about our front front line. They do not know how to score goals. Uh, Dominic Samuel has got a couple. He need, if he wants to be considered uh, a decent striker, especially in this in this division, he needs to be scoring regularly. You know, look at just look at Oldham. They were struggling towards the bottom end of the table. I think they had two players on uh, on on four or five, or maybe even six goals apiece. And we have our top scorer is Dominic Samuel with. Five, I think, and then we're struggling. We are struggling to find uh, someone else who can stick the ball in the back of the net. Let's, uh, uh, I'll continue my rant in just a second. Here's a recap of the starting lineup uh, for Oldham. Placid in gold, Domingan, Clark, Brian, Nepomuceno, Hunt, Byrne, Fane, Gardner, Doyle, and Davis. It was actually substitute Menig who come off the bench and he popped the winner on the 90th minute. Rovers looked like the ones who were gonna win the game towards the end. They were, the pressure was there, but Oldham counter-attacked it beautifully and, and put our our slippery, sloppery defence under under a little bit of pressure and they get a goal. Let's get back to the start lines. Rovers, Raya in goal, Caddis, Ward, Mulgrew, Williams, Conway, Whittingham, Smallwood, Bennett, Samuel and Antoinson. And here are my rankings of the players. As you can see, pretty poor across the board. And I'm giving uh, David Raya five, Caddis five, Elliot Ward four. That's me being generous. Uh, Mulgrew 5, Williams 5, Conway 6, Whittingham 5, Smallwood 5, Bennett 6, Samuel 5, and Antonson 5. Uh, the 6s are, well, it's just merely for effort. They they ran their socks off, uh, both Conway and Bennett. Conway uh, returning to action, which was great to see him. And he did look like he was... If, whenever he had the ball, he was running his legs off and he was putting the uh, Waldem under a lot of pressure, which which I guess is what he's there to do. It's just so frustrating. The fact that we are who we are and the fact that we are not getting the results. And it, it irks me so much to see the likes of Wigan who probably have, have, have done it the right way. They've brought in really good players. They've managed to hold on to the likes of uh, Nick Powell uh, and, and, and Will Gregg. Uh, and, and I feel, I think they're, they're, it's going to be them. They're going to be, they're going to be top in the table. I, I, I hate to admit it, but I think they're going to be walking away with the championship at the end of the season. A second spot, can Shrewsbury hold on? I don't know. Um, but Rovers, they need to sort this out. They need, like I said, six points out of the next two games. If not, I think we can kiss away those top two spots. Well, that's what I have to say about the result. Here's what the governor had to say about the result. No, yeah, not really. I think it's... Um... More disappointing with the performance, the attacking performance really in the team today didn't create enough, weren't um, weren't bright enough, sharp enough, incisive enough really in the in the final third of the pitch. You know we can't keep cle keeping clean sheets to win football matches, and um, so we we didn't threaten them enough today. You know at the other end of the pitch, I thought we got bullied a little bit by the big centre forward, and uh, so there was a lot of frustration for me today. Um, Told the team, let's see how we react. It's uh, we are going to lose matches, but um, you know we, we came here and have talked about being very positive and getting getting three points today. We're looking at two home games and see if we could get nine points from the week. But um, it's proved to be a difficult day for us, and um, we're left frustrated. Yeah, listen, he, he, he yelled his hand in the dressing room, apologised. No need to do that, of course. But um, yeah, you need to, we need to take chances when it's a game. A few chances for us, we have to take the pretty good ones that came along and uh, we didn't manage to do that and then we've paid the price right at the end so um, we're leaving frustrated and yet we did we deserve anything from the game if it had been nil nil I'd have still been frustrated that we didn't create enough and didn't play well enough um, you know with, with total respect to all them you know Blackburn Rovers is a much much bigger club with bigger budgets bigger expectation and we have to come here and win and uh, unfortunately today we didn't no, all out the thing I think first half was really poor in the top half of the pitch, um, I think um, the changes, you know, leave us a bit more exposed. I'd have to say, they, you know, you, we've talked about Harry Chapman. Harry Chapman is good at what he does, and yet the team, the team are a little bit more open when Harry's on the pitch. Uh, so the game goes a bit more end to end, and you hope in his good moments he can hurt them more than they hurt you. Bradley found it difficult to, to make a real impact even though he had a few little good moments out on the right side but um, 
yeah, frustrating, disappointing. Um, it's no good smudging it over. Disappointing for the supporters who came again in big numbers and um, they expect their team to come to these places and win and, and, and so do I. But uh, fortunately, we didn't manage to do it today. Oh, we were too deep. The team's too deep. It's you know we're afraid of the power of their centre forward really playing way too deep, allowing the ball to go into the strikers' feet all day long really and. Um, you know, ask our strikers how difficult it was to get into their feet for staff with somebody right up their backside every time. It was, um, yeah, it's avoidable, but um, but it was almost it was if it was coming, the the the, the, uh, the team weren't brave enough ultimately to, to defend high at the day. Oh, let's wait and see. You know, I've told the players the home games aren't easy. The, the expectation of the crowd is there. You have to start on the front foot. You have a have to go and do the job. Basically, it's um, playing for this club is not an easy gig. They have to. Have it in their bellies to um, to carry the the flag and the, the, the expect to win in this league. I expect to win. They should expect to win. The fans definitely expect to win. And so now we've got two home games. Hopefully to pick up six points. Uh, well, that's putting it nicely, Tony. Um, we are the joke of football, especially League One. So uh, it was pretty easy to find some. Uh, words of wisdom from social media here are some of the highlights because there was plenty there was so much so much banter thrown at us uh, for the result because of the cockiness that we had going into the game and, I, and, and but to be honest with you hand on heart I, I, I felt that this was going to be a tough game um, I felt we a draw would have been great before uh, before the before the start of the match I would have taken a point um, obviously as the day as the game progresses you feel that you, you can get something from the game but uh, to walk away with nothing is shambolic anyway on social media, this is on Facebook, on the League One banter group. If uh, if you're a Rovers fan, I'll probably stay off that for the next 24 to 48 hours. Here's Kieran Hartsley. How was your big day out at Blackburn? And a little snapshot of uh, of the result, the one nil result. Anthony Fitzpatrick again on Facebook. Well, well this is embarrassing. Well done, Latics. Cheers for the three points, Blackburn. Yeah, Joe Adams was uh, before the game very vocal in how he thought the result was or, or the match was going to play out, and he wrote, uh, and this is just a little snippet of, of of his post. Feel sorry for Oldham fans. Just imagine this time next week, Blackburn will have the smash you four 0 at your own place with a fresh squad. It could even get more than that. He does he does go on, but uh, but I've only got a little snippet of his of his uh, post. Meanwhile, also on Facebook. Robert Winter says, Blackburn, what a side, LOL. Harry Poth says, also says, ha ha, Blackburn. Sean Jackson says, can you hear Blackburn sing? I can't hear a feckin' thing. Ha ha ha, you're shite. Ah. Uh, so, uh, Richie Wellens, like I said earlier, has been been uh, in caretaker charge of Oldham and he's been doing a fantastic job. Earlier in the week, Paul Scholes was interviewed for the role and uh, I think even some other mega superstars of the past are also sniffing around that job. But Richie Wellens should get this job. And I'm not I'm not an Oldham fan at all. Obviously, I'm wearing the blue and white halves despite the, uh, despite the shambolic performance. But Richie Wellens should get this job. If they don't, Oldham are going to shoot themselves in the foot. Anyway, Sarah's... Okay, back on Twitter. Sarah Steven says, give that fella the job. Well done, lads. Also on Twitter, at Tom Tish says, give it to Wellens now. Again, and at Hendrick25275 says, Paul Who for manager, give it to Richie Wellens. And Rosie Moore, fellow Blackburn fan, says, didn't I say, cannot get anything against this poorer team. Such a good opportunity to get points. Looks like Alden play better as well. Some huge scores in League One. Man Alive, what a competitive league. Loving it. Don't go to the championship, kids. It's nothing on this. Uh, Trigger 3562 says slipping further and further away from the leaders. League One for us again next season. Uh, at Beer Munster says shocking performance, shameful. 3,500 want a full refund. Um, uh, at 800TJ008 says Ward is like a curse. Back in the team and we lose one zip. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He should not be playing. Bench at best. If not, get him in the reserves. Stick him in the Checker Trade Cup or something like that. Um, play out his contract and get rid of him. Uh, the result leaves Blackburn in 10th spot. We do have a couple of games in hand with the, with the, some of the teams uh, in the division above us. Uh, Oldham creep up to 17th spot. We do have a new uh, table topper, and that is Wigan Athletic. 3 0 victors against Southend. Shrewsbury only picking up a point away against Plymouth, uh, who are our next opponents at Ewood Park come Tuesday. Or we also play Portsmouth on the following Saturday. They were 2 0 winners against MK Dons. 
And Gary Bowyer's Blackpool pick up a 1-1 draw away at Walsall. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. But before you go anywhere, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel and check out my FIFA 95 hack series. We've done the Oldham game. I think it's a much more Rovers favourable result. You might want to check that bad boy out. And while you're over there, give me a thumbs up for this video and make sure you smash that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Uh, that is if you want to. Um, because after today's performance, you probably don't want to. Yeah, just want to say that this is the venue or the or the set or the studio of my FIFA games, where I do play my FIFA games live in this truck. I'm bang in the middle of central Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm actually on the road. Uh, we're, we're doing a bit of family business today, so uh, I thought I had to get the, the review in somehow. So I thought I'd do it in the truck for uh, one time only. Well, I'd say one time only. You never know. So the next two games for Blackburn are Plymouth and Portsmouth. I'll talk about the Plymouth game in a separate video and preview in about a day or so. So make sure you check that out. But we've got to go in there into that one all guns blazing. I don't want to see no 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 central core, a defensive core. We've got to play the likes of Chapman or Dak from the get-go. Maybe drop Antonson or Samuel or both. And, uh, and, and actually freshen up that start at 11 because it's getting a bit dire. Despite the fact that we were on international break. Uh, and the players did come back refreshed, so uh, it, I think the whole eleven needs needs to be needs to be sorted out. I'm going to hang my head in shame on this one. This was a, a poor, 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 poor performance from Rovers. Um, and to be honest with you, Oldham deserve it. You know, they're they're a different outfit under Richie Wellens, um, so they need to they need to you know make the right decision and to, and give him the job on a full time basis. As for Rovers, back to the drawing board. And uh, yeah, extra training session for them, uh, uh, Mowbray. Get them out there tomorrow morning. You know, no day off. This is this is poor, and this is this is um, this is mid-table standard. You know, mid-table performance from Rovers. We don't deserve to be in the top two. We definitely don't deserve to be in the playoffs. All we need now is we just need to we need to rip up that team sheet and start fresh. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.